So, and we can't even, in our program, we can't even really, uh, we can't calculate it, I have to simulate it. And back to the software, if I have two tiers, one GPM each tier, no glycol, using water, um, I'll just use a three quarter inch tube, one inch tubes are too big for, you know, get as much heat transfer, not as turbulent. Use a fairly large uh, element with maximum pin count. Throw in those two tiers. I rate it. Just over 1,800. 1,800 um, uh, BTUH per linear foot. Now, this is an iterative process. You have to use the energy equation. If you have 10 feet, you have to take this 1839 times 10, and you have to divide it by, in this case, since we have no glycol, 500, and your GPM of 2 to figure out what the delta T is. And then you have to put it back, um, then you have to figure out what your new average water is. And because you can't assume, everyone assumes it's 20 degree drop, or 30 degree drop, but until you figure it out for each length of run, you won't know what that is. The iteration only takes about two times. We can do that if you want, but I... Just show, just show, show what happens when you write it down to 120 there. Yeah. So when I bring it down, and, and this will be entering water, so let's bring it down to 110, or average water. So now this, this is with the heat pump one. Right? Again, this field, I mentioned it earlier, this field is for average water temp. So if we're assuming a 20 degree, and we'd have to iterate it to figure out if that's the actual delta T on our length of run, but uh, we'll assume 20 degree delta T and that gives us a 110 average. Now watch it go into the floor. 493, wow. same device, <laughs> same flow rate, much less energy. Now let's go up, you'll see, uh, and this has to do with that temperature difference. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's over half the energy, right? If you, if you use zero degree, right, that's a reference point. Um, but that temperature difference, it's gotten like this. So you just don't have a means to transfer. So I'm gonna bring it up to 160. Now watch what happens. Remember we were 1839 before, now we're 1412. So you can see it's fairly linear and then it gets down to these lower temps and it just drops off the map. And 120 degree water is very popular for lead and efficient designs because these condensing boilers and where you want to operate them at and these kinds of things. But nobody designs it right. Right, but yeah. uh, the, the good engineers and architects are, are collaborating early to figure out how big we have to make these devices, what we do with them, and, um, and whether we need a little more temperature. You know, Because oftentimes they can do 130 water or, or they can give me a lot more flow rate. This, this, this engine is on the website for Sterling, right? I think it is. I think no. It well, it might be now. Okay. I have the old CDI loaded. I can oh, give okay. you that one, too. Okay. Um, but anyway, that's fin tube. There's also panel, flat panel radiators. Rental is the common make of that. Um, there's ceiling uh, panels, also radiant devices. Um, and then floor. Uh, a few others, but that's the majority of product. Yeah, we'll probably, for those of you who are doing that side of the design, we'll, we'll probably take and pick, do, uh, do our radiant based on like a, a radiant panel instead of a, a fit pipe, actually. Okay, we'll, we'll make that transition because it works a little bit better usually. Right? I'm not saying anything wrong, right? No. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's just panels get really big. Yeah. Not so much a heating cool yeah. in there. It takes the whole seat. Yeah, yeah, right. And radiant panels, uh, it, it's important to note that radiant or radiation is a great way to heat people. There's, fin tube's great because there's no moving air. People with allergies, people that don't like drafts, it's awesome, silent, if the pipes are sized properly, right? And, uh, and you just feel very comfortable, especially along the windows. So takes all that gives you a curtain of air, takes the draft away. But um, yeah, go ahead. I just thought the, the radiant 
themselves, but they actually convect, don't they? That's right. Okay. So you've heard of convectors. That's a bigger version of a fin tube with header coils. It takes less flow, but puts out a lot more heat. That's for spot heating, like at an entryway to a building or in a bathroom. Whereas fin tube, you know, would get bashed up, and it has to be really long. Fin tube's best for long, you know, exterior wall and windows and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so you're getting the convection of the free moving air from the temperature difference, being some pressure difference, and but you're also getting the radiation. Radiation is a much more effective heat transfer than conduction and convection. Although it's a power of four. I mean, you go skiing and it's 32 out. It's sunny. You can start sweating, right? You go in the shade, you're freezing instantly. Uh, that's no different. It's a hot body radiating. So when Dave was talking about um, radiators or ceiling radiators, even though they're up there, they still can get a lot of heat out. They're not going to get any conduction going. It's going to be, you know, up here, you know, kind of wasting its way up there, but to get a lot of radiation. Radiation goes everywhere. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. That was good. Yeah, sure. yep. Oh, there's probably some food out there. It's cold. Oh, you guys are probably hungry to eat something.